Good morning, everyone. Um, so welcome to the July meeting of the Board of Regents. Uh, I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, please note that this meeting is being recorded and will be posted on MUS website. Jasmine, can you please take the roll? Yes, we'll begin with you, Chair Rogers. Here. Regent Buchanan. Here. Regent Dombrowski. Here. Regent Bow. Here. Regent Lozar. Here. Regent Southworth. Here. Regent Blossom. Here. Commissioner Christian. I'm here. Governor Jean Forte. Excused. Superintendent Artson. She will be here directly. Perfect. Coming understand. soon. Back to you, Chair. Thank you. Um, first off, I want to welcome my fellow board members. I know how busy each and every one of you are, so thank you so much for taking the time. It's so nice to all be together as well, so thanks for driving all the way over to Helena. Um, I'd also like to thank each of you for entrusting me to serve as chair this year. Um, big shoes to fill after Chair Lozar has left the seat, uh, but I appreciate your trust and uh, promise to run efficient meetings for all of us. Um, it's truly an honor to represent the Board of Regents uh, and the Montana University System, and I'm looking forward to a busy but productive year ahead. We have a lot of work to do, but I'm incredibly confident in this body and our ability as a system to continue meeting the needs of students and their families, as well as the ongoing needs of Montana's economy. I'd like to take a minute to welcome our newest regent, Norris Blossom. Governor Gianforte recently appointed Norris to serve as the next student regent, and we're incredibly excited to have him here. For those of you who don't know him, Norris is a student at Montana State University and recently served as the president of the Associated Students of Montana State University. Welcome, Regent Blossom. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, Norris. Our agenda today is fairly short. Commissioner Christian will start things off with his commissioner's report. After that, we'll get a report from Superintendent Artson on behalf of the Office of Public Instruction. I'll note that Dylan Clapmeyer from the governor's office is unable to join us today due to a scheduling conflict with other meetings. After that, we'll move into our agenda, which includes a consent agenda, along with a few action items for consideration. And then we will have an opportunity for public comment. At the end of the meeting, we'll go into executive session to review an honorary doctorate nomination and conduct our performance reviews of MUS leadership. Uh, before we dive into the agenda, I'll hand it over to Jasmine to address some of the technical components associated with today's meeting. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, everyone. This meeting is open to the public electronically. Public comment is welcome on all items. There is also a scheduled time for public comment on any matter within the jurisdiction of the Board of Regents, but that is not on the agenda. Anyone wishing to provide public comment is encouraged to do so by registering for the meeting at mus.edu forward slash board forward slash. If you wish to give public comment, please use the raise your hand feature. If you are joining online, the raise your hand feature is normally found at the bottom of your screen or in the participants panel. And if you're joining on phone, uh, dial star nine. The host will lower, lower hands in order and ask you to unmute. For those joining by phone, star six to unmute. And for those joining online, press the unmute button. Once unmuted, please state your full name and then proceed with your comment. Written public comment may also be sent to me, Jasmine Casanovas at jcasanovas at montana.edu. If you run into any technical components at any point, please email Jared Smith at jsmith at montana.edu for assistance. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thanks so much, Jasmine. Welcome. Super. Yeah, thank you for being with us. I don't have a tardy slip from my mom, <laughs> but I am here. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Um, well, first I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve the minutes from our recent meetings on May 18th to 19th and June 20th of this year. So moved. Moved by Regent Buchanan. Is there any discussion or corrections from members of the board? Any discussion or corrections from members of the campuses? Or any public comment? I do not see any public comment. Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, seeing no further comment, I'll call for the vote. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The motion passes. 
I'll now turn it over to Commissioner Christian for his report. Awesome. Thank you. I was going to turn on the microphone. I guess it's on. <laughs> um, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Chair Rogers, welcome to your new role. Vice Chair Buchanan, you, you, you as well. Uh, truly already uh, consuming a lot of both of your time, and uh, we greatly appreciate that dedication. Look forward to the year ahead and the work that we all have to do together. Uh, so appreciate you stepping into those roles. Thanks to everyone for being here. All our board members uh, make some tremendous sacrifices to be here. Uh, hard to imagine we've already hit the uh, mid-July point. Um, seems absolutely crazy, but hopefully uh, beyond your board duties, everyone's getting a little chance to get outside and enjoy some of what uh, Montana has to offer. I know Norris is because I saw him out on the trail in Glacier <laughs> Park uh, a couple weeks ago, just before he got appointed. And so welcome to your, your role here. Glad to have you on board. Um, pretty brief this morning, as, as Chair Rogers said, I just have a, a few announcements, really uh, encourage everyone as always to look at the campus reports that have been posted. Uh, significant amount of information there uh, for everyone. So please take some time to, to look at those. Before we jump in too far, I, I would like to just uh, quickly mention um, uh, the, the loss and the passing of a good friend of higher ed in, in Eric Fever. Um, most of you knew Eric, uh, absolutely tireless advocate for education, for all that he stood for. Um, you know, I, I think one of the remarkable things about Eric and, and maybe some of what's been lost a little bit in these last few years is just his absolute ability to have a, a, a mindset and a decision and a position, but still cordially uh, have some good debate over topics. We had many spirited debates, he and I, some very spirited debates, but it, it was always at a level that was appropriate and uh, you knew where he stood and you knew where he was going and what he was advocating for and just a, a great individual to work with. So uh, our, our thoughts, condolences go out to Eric and his family uh, as we mourn that loss. Um, happier news, I'd like to uh, announce uh, Chancellor Hickswa has uh, accepted a position on the Northwest Commission, our accrediting body. Uh, Montana usually has a representative chair or uh, President Cruzado was uh, serving in that role prior, and uh, uh, I think uh, Stephanie did a great job uh, representing Montana as we need to have good advocates on our accrediting body board. Um, also, want to uh, recognize, uh, some of you may have seen, we the Board of Trustees for Dawson Community College recently announced that they've hired uh, Justin Vilmer uh, to serve as the next president there. He uh, comes to us from um, uh, a business and uh, chief financial officer role at Colby College in Colby, Kansas. And uh, before that was a dean and director of finance at Washburn University in Topeka, Kansas. So glad to have him on board. Uh, he was here at the office the other day and we all got a chance to meet and interact, had good conversations as he steps into this role. So want to wel welcome Justin. He, he's there. Justin, if you want to say hello, please do. Sure. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Commissioner Christian, um, Madam Chair, and uh, Board of Regents. Thank you for the quick minute to introduce myself. Um, uh, a real quick little bit about myself. Uh, I've got a wife named Jessica, six small kids, so I have uh, an extremely loud house sometimes. <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a first-generation college student, like uh, many of the students we all serve. As, uh, as Commissioner Christian shared, um, I'm new to being a president of a community college, although I'm not new to higher education. I've been in higher education in the state of Kansas for the past 10 years, um, serving mostly in financial roles as a controller and assistant dean, and then as a CFO um, at a community college there in Western Kansas, which I have found is a lot like um, Eastern Montana. I'm extremely passionate about the two-year sector of higher education. I'm a proud supporter of career and technical education. Uh, and just, just a really huge supporter of um, everything the two-year sector provides. So uh, I'm very honored to be the next president of Dawson Community College. I've already hit the ground running. Um, that's really all I have to say. So if you have any questions for me, um, by all means, feel free to ask, but I look forward to working with you all in the future. Wonderful, welcome. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. 
uh, and with Justin accepting that role, of course, Kathleen O'Leary has been serving as interim for what close to the last year. And so we thank Kathleen for her time there and, uh, She's back in Helena, and likely our MUS paths will, will cross with Kathleen's again, but thanks to her for her service there. Um, finally, really the, the only kind of item that we, we want to discuss just a little bit, and I'm going to turn it over to Allie, but as many of you have seen, the uh, we did get a Supreme Court ruling on uh, a, a suit that we had brought um, regarding uh, our role in, in deciding uh, – the, the fate of House Bill 102 and, and some of the, the things that were um, implemented in that. And so, Ali, if you would maybe kind of walk us through that decision at a relatively high level for now, Madam Chair. Obviously, more work to be done on this front, but Ali, please. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Christian. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, happy to be with you this morning. Um, yeah, and some good news to share. So on June 29th, the Montana Supreme Court issued a unanimous decision holding that the Board of Regents is constitutionally vested with the full responsibility to supervise, coordinate, manage, and control the Montana University system and its properties, and that the regulation of firearms on MUS campuses falls within that authority. The Supreme Court ruled that the sections of House Bill 102 that sought to eliminate or restrict the board's authority to regulate firearms on campus infringed on this authority and were therefore unconstitutional. The court found that maintaining a safe and secure educational environment falls squarely within the board's constitutional authority under Article 10, Section 9. The decision focused on the narrow question that this board decided to present to the Supreme Court um, or to the court uh, of authority that um, of the question of authority. The court noted that it was not elevating the board to a fourth branch of government or giving it veto power over state laws that you might disagree with. Rather, what it the decision does is it clarified that when legislative action infringes on the constitutional powers of the board to supervise coordinate, manage, and control the Montana University system, then the board's authority must control in that situation. This decision, I think, will be helpful both in resolving the specific questions uh, about the application of House Bill 102 and what that meant for the Montana University system. And going forward, it also further defines the role of the board versus the role of the legislature and how the court interprets the authority and responsibility of the board under the Constitution. Um, so overall, you know, I would say this is a really strong decision for the board. Um, it, it invalidates those sections of House Bill 102 as they apply to the board. We did not seek to invalidate House Bill 102 in total. So there are pieces of that legislation that still stand. Uh, and I think the court clarified that when there are decisions that are integral to the operation of campuses, that authority rests with the Board of Regents. Uh, and so that, that's kind of a high level summary of what the decision did. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any questions on that? Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. I guess, uh, Commissioner, I have a question. Sure. Do, what do we expect next? Like, could there be another approach on this, or is, it, or we, is this been resolved in our opinion? Um, Madam Chair, Regent Bow, uh, Valley, you can weigh into if you want. I mean, I mean, I, I think that really falls into the people are certainly free to to do what they want. I think it goes a long ways to answering the the question about whose responsibility it is to make these type of decisions. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's really hard to say. That certainly, some of what you read there, they could ask for that to be reconsidered. They can take other avenues. I I, I really don't know. Balls in their court to to for sure. Practice. I think for us, we're uh, we're satisfied with the decision. We, as we said in the press release, we really appreciate the clarity that the court created for us in terms of who has the authority to make decisions when it comes to management and control and. Uh, I think um, you know that that's that's what we sought uh, in terms of a, an answer and a resolution. I think that's where we're at. Um, there's there's really no further steps for us at this point. Do do you anticipate any policy provisions based on clarifying questions that are coming out right now, Madam Chair, Regent Southworth? Uh, I, I think potentially, um, you know, as as things like this 
come along, it's probably a, a reasonable time to review what we're doing or what the campuses are doing. And uh, we, we may ask for that in the months to come, but uh, at this point in time, you know, we, there was a policy in place. There is a policy in place. We didn't change that policy. I think that policy still stands in there. There all, that policy has guided decisions at the campus level that, right. that stand as well. So I, I think it's sort of a, a unappropriate opportunity to sort of review what we're doing, but uh, um, I, th I think that's where we're at right now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Valley, certainly thank you for all your efforts on this. Also, just want to take a moment uh, to, to thank uh, Martha Sheehy with the Sheehy Law Firm. Um, still working hard to help uh, the Montana University System and greatly appreciate her efforts. Um, also, Kyle Gray with the Holland and Hart and, and a, a, a team that worked there. Uh, you know, they took this thing on pro bono without cost to us and dedicated a tremendous amount of time and effort. Um, and I, I, I just really appreciate both of their leadership. Uh, former Regent Sheehy certainly continues to answer the call from within the university system. We, <laughs> we appreciate her, her efforts there. Um, Madam Chair, with that, honestly, uh, I, I think uh, in the spirit of a good brisk uh, summer meeting. I think we can turn it back to you and, and move on to the agenda. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Thank Commissioner. You. Um, and next up, we'll have a report from Superintendent Artson. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair. Commissioner, Regent. Um, it's good to be here. Uh, I'll be brief as well. Came in from Eureka yesterday. A telecom board meeting was there. They move around the state. We have 25 uh, co-ops. Then, and public schools are a great member. They have about a half a million membership uh, within the, the co-op. Co-ops are stated in law, and it's quite interesting how that, that is navigated. So I worked with them as a legislator as well as in my role now. We all know what happened in the pandemic, and even on your campuses as well as in our public school system, education was delivered differently, and that different is probably going to be a mainstay going forward in more of a virtual model. So making sure that we have power uh, to our very rural schools and bandwidth is something that the Office of Public Instruction is uh, really looking at. So I've hired an individual to uh, network with the Department of Administration to make sure that our uh, clerks, our school administrators, know all that language. You know, in education, there is such a an acronym dictionary that allows uh, us to be unique, and that's the same way when it comes to anything in technology. So making sure that we have a pathway to educate everyone within um, you know, my world uh, in, a, in a manner that they understand uh, the opportunities that are here, as well as with the ARPA dollars that are going to be existing to 25 and possibly any other thing that comes to congressional action through infrastructure. So Eureka was beautiful. It rained all the way here, uh, and that's a wonderful thing. Montana looks like Ireland if you've been out and about, <laughs> right? It's very beautiful and green. We um, went together on June 6th, Commissioner, Good. and I don't know if you've explained or shared with the uh, shared policy goals that as constitutional officers that we can do together. And that's one of the things that I would like to impart today to see if there's something that we could work on together. We have a legislative session in six months, and not that it's too early, but it's right on the cusp of being almost too late. And I believe there's a way then that we can stave off court or stave off any misconceptions. Now is the time to do that. So what I would like to do is offer, quite possibly before the month ends, uh, us to get together and try to understand what that next view in a crystal ball could look like in a partnership. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. We are working in a partnership with MSU in um, a STEM Summer Institute. It's going to happen the third week on campus, making sure that math and reading are in the forefront, getting back to the basics and understanding also that that job market is looking for individuals 
that are highly skilled in STEM, in math, as well as in science. And what a great opportunity. They'll be invading your campus. <laughs> we were also invading your campus uh, that, first, uh, that first part of June. We had, normally we have about 1,300 school, uh, how do I want to say, officials from superintendents, teachers. We have bring in all kinds. And because we offered virtual as well, we were half that but still the great opportunity. And one of the things that I wanna say, President Crisato, is that the, um, the opportunity to go to the building for Native American studies, it was, it was, it was just a great repast. I have started a uh, youth uh, group uh, with elders. So we're bridging a generational divide within our, our tribal world to make sure that our youth understand where they've been, but they are the voice of the future. And um, moving forward legislative wise, I believe having a tribal liaison that might connect both of our worlds would be in education and then give it to the <coughs> legislature and have it funded via the legislature might be a great opportunity. Um, that's just one of the things that's on my plate, okay? Um, but the other part is teacher residency. We have, uh, starting this fall, I'll just name off Cayuse Prairie, Victor, Trout Creek, Woodman, Sunset, Lodgegrass, Wyola, Pryor, Browning, Poplar, and Frontier are taking pairs of teachers that are pre-teachers that are doing their uh, student teaching. We're paying for that. We're using those precious COVID dollars to do that. We are, of course, very grateful that there would be uh, an opportunity for those credits to be uh, given or forgiven in a manner at the university setting so that these individuals um, come out with less debt. We're also encouraging mentorship uh, within the um, opportunity of the staff of these schools to be able to keep these pairs of teachers um, learning while they're in that learning environment. Uh, there is skin in the game from the school districts where they're offering um, lodging. And I think that's one of the most challenging things that we've noticed throughout the uh, Rural Teacher Initiative, that keeping them there has a lot to do with the housing. So we're very excited about that teacher uh, residency. Today at the Board of Public Ed, there will be a discussion on uh, Board of Public Ed Rules Chapter 58, which is teacher prep programs. We have 10 of them across our your system and that interface with our teachers. Uh, and our school districts. And um, those rules are very interesting. We tried to very narrowly bring together a group of Montanans, uh, teacher leaders, community leaders as well, to narrow it and also reflect what's happening nationally, but also try to keep the Montana flavor. So it's not that we adopted everything nationally, but that um, I'm very proud of where we are uh, going with Chapter 58. The board then will assume these rules for public comment after tomorrow. And um, after a month of public comment, then they will um, act and they will be live before the end of the year. The other thing that is happening is um, we have um, Chapter 55, which is accreditation for a K-12 system that is just uh, finishing up with a negotiating rulemaking committee that is a statutory committee that is tomorrow. And then that recommendation comes to me. I give that recommendation to the board along with an economic impact statement. If indeed anything that is mandated in our public school system, the legislature is required to look at it. Not required to fund, but required to at least see what might be there. Uh, we had, when I looked at this before in uh, 2013, when I was still a legislator in the interim at this section of law, I had to go out three times to schools and communities and try to get any feedback. It took me three times to try to get at least 100 comments. We have over 800 comments on school accreditation at this point. So education is in the forefront of everyone's mind at this point. And I believe commissioner in September, when we meet, I believe it's on the 13th of September, 
when our constitutional uh, obligations get together again at the Capitol, that we can bring forward a partnership of what it is that we can see that we want to keep, what we want to uh, change, and then the manner of that change. So, uh, Madam Chair, I could go on and on and on. I know you've got a lot on your plate as well. I'm honored to show up. I'm honored to be here. And I'm very available. If any members would like to visit with us about any of the chapters or the discussion or the great work that is happening within our school system. state. So with that, I'll stand for questions. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Superintendent Artson. Um, and just have to reflect on your continued commitment to our rural communities. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing out there. Seeing no further discussion. Sounds good. Great. I think we'll go ahead and move into our agenda for today. Uh, first, we'll start with our consent agenda. Uh, I believe everyone has had the opportunity to review the consent agenda items. Are, are there any items any regent would like to move off the consent agenda? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda. Um, moved by Regent Dombrowski. Uh, is there any discussion or corrections from members of the board? Any discussion or corrections from the campuses? Uh, and any public comment? I do not see any public comment. Thank you. Uh, seeing no further comment, I will call for the vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same side. Uh, the motion passes. So we'll go ahead and move on to our action items. Uh, the first item for discussion today is a request for authorization to rename the Liberal Arts Building after Dennis and Gretchen Eck at the University of Montana. I'll now turn it over to Deputy Commissioner Thigpen to present on the item. Good morning, members of the board, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, as you mentioned, your first action item is a request to rename uh, <clears throat> the Liberal Arts Building at the University of Montana to the Dennis and Gretchen Eck Liberal Arts Building. Um, for reference, I thought it would be kind of helpful just to point out where that building is. Um, and we have the expert here with uh, President Bodner, but the Liberal Arts Building is located at the center of campus, uh, really at the heart but the, everything that goes on there um, and faces the north side of the oval. And the building itself is shaped uh, like an E uh, with the main stem running east to west. Uh, for several years, Dennis and Gretchen Eck have provided significant support to renovate the Liberal Arts Building, which includes uh, support for a large uh, and technology, technologically updated auditorium uh, numerous renovated classrooms, a new central entrance to the building, uh, student and faculty engagement hubs, updated uh, in an ADA accessible restrooms and other really significant improvements. Um, there's all sorts of statistics on how many students uh, use, use that building, but it's my understanding that it's one of the most heavily used buildings uh, on campus um, and has really been upgraded to uh, an, a, a very nice uh, level um, there on campus. So, um, in 2017, uh, the campus recognized the X, the X contributions by naming the academic hall of the building Dennis and Gretchen Eck Hall. And again, that's the main stem of the liberal arts building. More support has followed since that time, and UM is proposing to further recognize the X significant contributions uh, by uh, renaming the entire building um, after the X. So in compliance with the board's naming policy, the campus held a listening session to collect public comment on the proposal. The campus uh, received one comment, I believe, that did not specifically uh, ad address the naming of Eck Hall itself. And that comment has been shared though for you and is posted with your materials. Um, and uh, I'm available to answer any questions, but we also have President Bonner here. Well, Madam Chair, uh, thank you, Deputy Commissioner. And I, if I could just offer just brief, uh, a, a deep expression of my gratitude to Dennis and Gretchen Eck. As, as those of you who have spent time on our campus recognize the, the prominent place of the liberal arts building on our campus. And uh, the Ecks uh, have, have been not just generous with their philanthropy, but very involved in, uh, in taking a, you know, the, the trend is often to build new. And what uh, we've done with this building is, is really give it a facelift and a renewal and a rejuvenation. 
Um, and we've done so really in an efficient way um, and uh, in a way that, again, makes use of of the building itself, but but transforms it into a more modern uh, learning and uh, and 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 uh, engaging environment. So you know the 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 specific dollar amount is one thing, but the economic impact is much higher than this dollar amount. Were you to have simply raised a building and uh, and and created a new one, and and that's frankly uh, Dennis himself has been deeply involved uh, with our architects and our. Our engineering team at the university and uh, so so there's a dollar amount listed here of their contributions but it is significantly higher uh, in terms of their impact to campus and and this this naming further you know clarifies and, uh, and and better recognizes what the impact has been on this building so I just want to uh, I wanted to make that additional point on uh, on the the, the deeper involvement in this process really over the past uh, seven years or so, um, maybe not quite that long, maybe uh, six or so, but uh, of the Eck family and uh, and again, express my gratitude to Dennis and Gretchen for, uh, for their contributions and their continued commitment to the university. Thank you, President Bodner. Thank you, Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner Thigpen. Uh, any discussion from the regents on this item? Um, I'll just add in, uh, I think it's a very appropriate item. Their longtime support is so evident, and um, it seems appropriate from my perspective to name the entire building um, on behalf of them. And I just want to personally note my appreciation for their generosity towards the university system. <laughs> um, seeing no further discussion from the regents, I'll go ahead and move forward with the item. So having heard the item, I'll enter a entertain a motion to approve the request to authorize the University of Montana to rename Dennis and Gretchen Eck Hall and the remaining portions of the Liberal Arts Building, the Dennis and Gretchen Eck Liberal Arts Building. So moved. Moved by Regent Bao. Um, any discussion or corrections from the board? Any discussion or corrections from the campuses? And any public comment? I do not see any public comment. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, seeing no further comment, I'll call for the vote. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And any opposed, same sign. The motion passes. Congratulations to yeah. the X. That's great. Yeah, thank you again to the X. What a wonderful tribute to your contributions to the system. Now we'll go ahead and move on to item B. Um, this is an item to request uh, to approve a student fee for the Montana Public Interest Research Group, or MONTPERG, at the University of Montana. Deputy Commissioner Thickman. First of the board, uh, Madam Chair, thanks again. Um, there is significant more detail provided in the item description, so please uh, refer to that for additional points. But there are a few items that I just wanted to highlight that I thought would be helpful for the discussion this morning. Um, first, the MONTPERG fee which students uh, must opt out of paying was approved by the board in 2012. Um, at that time, there had been some concerns about whether there was sufficient oversight over those fees. Um, ultimately, UM students voted to amend the ASUM constitution to require student organizations receiving opt-out fees to be subject to ASUM uh, oversight. And that really paved the way for the creation of a UM affiliated student group known as UM Montford. Montperg itself is a separately incorporated 501c4 that is led by a board comprised of UM students. Uh, over the years, uh, Montperg has supported uh, various ballot initiatives, which requires it to be registered with the Office of the uh, Commissioner of Political Practices. Um, and they've also, uh, and sometimes hire students and sometimes recent graduates to lobby at the legislature. Uh, as you may recall from conversations last year, uh, the 2021 legislature did pass Senate Bill 319 that, among other things, uh, attempted to require opt-in fees instead of opt-out fees for student groups that are also required to register as political committees, such as Muffer. Um, The bill also attempted to place restrictions on using university property to assess or distribute the fees. SB 319 was challenged in two separate lawsuits. Uh, the important point to note is that uh, the section pertaining to Montperg and the prohibition on using university systems to distribute that fee uh, has been enjoined in a district court in Gallatin County. The current fee 
Supporting Montperg expired uh, last month, and so this item would approve the fee for another year through the uh, end of 2020, the fiscal year of 2023, so June 23. Uh, OCHI is recommending the approval of the optional fee, but with certain conditions that are outlined in more detail in the, in the item. Um, we are recommending approval of the fee provided Montperg does not register as a political committee or engage in lobbying as those terms are defined specifically in state law. Uh, user permit the use of the name or logos of the University of Montana and any Montperg activities or publications or directly or indirectly represent that UM uh, supports, endorses, or sponsors Montperg's activities. Um, there's certainly uh, you know, a lot of things um, that we could discuss, but uh, certainly available for any questions that this group may have. Thank you. Uh, first, I guess I'll go ahead and um, entertain a motion to approve the Montperg fee at the University of Montana subject to the conditions outlined in the item. So moved. Moved by Regent Buchanan. Um, any discussion from the board? Please, Regent Buchanan. Yeah, thank you. Um, we've talked about this a little bit in preparation for the meeting, and um, I think it's important to share some of that context as we talk about this. You know, it's my understanding, Commissioner Christian, that this is one of the only self-governed entities within the system that we act as the administrator of fee collections, right? So I don't think yeah. the discussion that we're having is at all about the scope of work that this student-led organization is doing. They're doing what the students feel is great. But I think the question that we have, and uh, it's been a question that I've been listening to for a decade um, since it was initiated in 2012, is what role do we play with, with entities that we're gathering funds for, but then ceding our role as a governing board or having any sort of governance over it. And um, the fact that it's such an outlier has given us, I think, great context for discussion. Um, it's my opinion that we shouldn't be making these outliers. We shouldn't have one offs like this in the administration piece. I certainly encourage this organization to, and, you know, through the you step back through the public comment that we've received, it's been a lot of fervor and excitement about scope of work. Again, I don't think that's what my concerns have been about. It's about our role in helping collect the fees in which they operate. And so um, I think it's a conversation for us to message to this group that if um, we are serious about being consistent uh, with our role and, and how we support what we do for organizations, encouraging this group to find a, another mechanism to administer the fee collection instead of through our, our processes that we, we administer fees across the campuses. So um, again, glad to make a motion to support this. It would be, I think, unfair at the last minute for an organization that has put this work and counted on the support. I, I do feel we should be actively discussing as we move a year out, we'll be talking about this again, uh, the option of, of possibly, well, of encouraging them to find another way to collect the fee in, instead of through our channels. Thank you, Reed. If that's consistent with some of the conversations. Yes, we've well stated. Yeah, very much so. Any other discussion from the board? Regent Dombrowski. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I've tried to um, be confident that we'll use this year to either be of assistance or at least help us not find ourselves back here in another year. So, um, you know, is there a process that we can um, encourage or demand? Or request? I don't know what the right word is because I think the the feedback has been the importance of the scope of the work. I, I would agree, uh, and, and how and how will they then perhaps look for an alternative, either the fee structure, the the, the structure themselves, etc. I know that takes time and effort. And do we have a role in that? And great, question. Madam Chair, Regent Dombrowski, uh, I I think that's a great point, and I think that's something that we'll ask the campus to help facilitate um, these, as Regent Buchanan said, discussions. We've had as this item came back uh, in front of us. I, I think Regent Buchanan, you said it well. I don't need to say it again, but it, it definitely is an outlier. And um, I, I think that there are other organizations, from clubs to political affiliates to all kinds of things, that do operate in these campus environments, do have other mechanisms for collecting fees. Um, it, it may be more work, candidly, than having it on. Uh, uh, the university generated bill, but it just seems probably more appropriate in the long run. And, you know, then that's, that's ultimately an organization outside of your purview as a board. And that's where they should operate. And that's, you know, honestly where they should collect the fee. Um, and so we'll, we'll work with the campus. We'll certainly ask the campus to do everything we can 
to make this year a, a smooth transition. I, I think that's a very fair approach that the board is taking in terms of, uh, uh, you know, considering this item today for approval, but but also uh, this conversation around um, in, in the long run, it might not be the best fit for us. And so how do we move forward on that? And I, I think that's absolutely something we can work with the campus. And, and like I said, there are other organizations, similar organizations, quite frankly, across the MUS that uh, operate in a similar environment. And uh, we'll, we'll model those and figure out how to help them uh, best make this transition. Please, Regent Blossom. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Regent Buchanan, to your point, I think there's some real importance in maintaining that consistency and fees and how they're being used across the NUS. Um, and talking to students from the University of Montana, uh, connecting students to the legislature is a pretty important function of Montford. So I just am wondering in this transition year, what might we be able to do to still maintain that accessibility for students to be at the legislature and you know learn about civic engagement? Um, in this year that we're helping the University of Montana figure out um, their new structure. I'd love to hear ideas of, of what might be able to do in, in this legislative session that keeps students engaged. Madam Chair, if, if I may, Regent Blossom, I, I think that's an excellent point. And uh, I, I think uh, Deputy Commissioner Thigpen touched on it, but we, we don't want to curtail student involvement whatsoever. Uh, in fact, we want to encourage it. There are already channels through uh, Mass, as you well know, um, through uh, university-sponsored lobbying efforts from the student organizations, both at MSU and, and at U of M, each have had uh, lobbying channels in the past. We encourage uh, everyone in, involved with Montpurg to continue those conversations. We'll work through the existing channels. Um, I, I think the other language on there isn't suggesting whatsoever that those students aren't free to do what they want, but they need to do it flying their own colors, not necessarily on behalf of the university, but on behalf of uh, their own organization or themselves, I think they can continue uh, to do what they want in that context. Um, and, I, and I think ultimately that's sort of uh, appropriate. And the, the end goal isn't to try to make this more difficult, it's to try to make it better. And, and I think ultimately, uh, as we look at generations of this down the, the road, it, it will be less coupled with uh, the university and allow them to more freedom to do what they want underneath the, the Montperg umbrella to lobby as they want to register as they want if we're not collecting a fee as a you know political higher a public higher education entity to do that so I, I, I think it really starts to clarify those channels I, I think they'll continue to have paths that they can be involved with uh, the MUS through our existing uh, lobbying efforts from the student organizations and through our uh, existing efforts through OCHI and, and through uh, MASS. And, and we'll certainly embrace uh, their input in that channel uh, moving forward. So I, I, I don't think the effort is to cut off that voice whatsoever. Um, I, I think it's just that we're appropriately collecting money on students' bills that aren't going toward political organizations. I mean, we have some boundaries around that that we've set ourselves as a board. Uh, anyway, and, and I think it's it's in part trying to maintain that is the other language, but individuals can certainly do what they want to do and they'll have paths to, to work with existing channels to get that done. Thank you. Great, great question. Any other discussion from Regents? So, Madam Chair, <clears throat> Commissioner, just to summarize it for someone who's not maybe as deeply involved in that aspect. We're we're going to create a viable pathway for this organization to transition to be able to offer their services, and then, and at the same time, you know, kind of bit better to adhere to what should be our consistency with all organizations across the system. Madam Chair, Regent Bow, that's absolutely our plan. They're their own entity, so what what help of ours they accept, um, but but we'll work with them closely to try to create a channel that their existence isn't compromised by this and uh, they'll have more freedom to do what they want as a political organization on their own and absolutely create uh, consistency across our own system and one that we feel comfortable about in terms of our political involvement. Thank you. Well, good discussion. Any other thoughts from the regions? Okay. 
Uh, Jasmine, uh, is there any discussion or corrections from the campuses on this item? I do not see any. Okay, and any public comment? I do not see any public comment. Okay, and I will thank you again, Jasmine, for sharing the public comment that was received. We received it both individually to our personal emails, and then Jasmine also forwarded us um, a number of items as well that hadn't come to us individually. So thank you for that, providing that public comment in advance, and thank you to the students for their engagement on that. Uh, so seeing no further comment, I will call for the vote. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The motion passes. And on to our final action item. This is a request to approve a staff item and I'll turn it over to Commissioner Christian. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you, you have before you a, a, an item to approve a compensation plan for a number of individuals in the MUS. To be honest with you, uh, especially those of you new to this board, this item's always caused a fair amount of confusion. So it looks like maybe all that you're concerned with is the compensation of a very few individuals and, and, and a very few that hold senior positions within the administration. The truth of the matter is that uh, those happen to be the only individuals that haven't otherwise been delegated either to myself as a commissioner or the campuses. The truth is that this is uh, consistent with what 7,800 some other employees will be receiving uh, at the same time, the first pay period in November. But I think wisely, the board said uh, the commissioner and, and his direct reports, deputy commissioners, presidents, otherwise, doesn't perfectly make sense to have uh, that individual approving their own increases. So you've maintained uh, the, the, the control on that item. And so what you have before you is an item to approve those 13 individuals that aren't otherwise delegated uh, somewhere else. Um, in your policy, either to myself or to the president's. Um, so uh, it, it, it is more clear than it uh, seems. It is consistent with the pay plan that will be rolled out across the MUS uh, the first part of November. And that is also consistent with the pay plan that was uh, approved by the legislature and funded by the legislature uh, in part. Um, the only addition is this year uh, we, we've added a position uh, consistent with the policy. Anyone that's a deputy commissioner uh, needs to be on there. We have uh, elevated Helen Thigpen's role to a deputy commissioner. I think I, I have, a, I guess, a couple comments about that. One, I think Helen's absolutely the right person for this role. Uh, she's got uh, deep connections and, and understanding of what it is we need to do to, to better communicate across many sectors, um, in, including in that of the government relations, public relations, working to communicate all of our, our uh, teams across the MUS. So I, I think it's absolutely the right fit. But also, I, I just want to comment, I, I also think the position is needed and worthy in, in terms of being elevated to a deputy commissioner. I think it's essential that this position uh, resides in the cabinet and that it has access to the conversations that we have every week about what's going on across the MUS and can help us create strategy around that for our interactions uh, with the public, but also uh, can help create strategies around the communications that flow out of those conversations and the rest. So I, I think it's a, a bit of a perfect storm in that we really needed this position elevated to a, a deputy commissioner role and to be part of uh, the, the cabinet team. Um, and then we just have a, a great person to fill it in Helen. So she uh, gets added to the uh, uh, metrics that's in front of you. Uh, otherwise, it's the, the same um, cast of characters that comes before you every year for uh, <laughs> approval. And uh, I would recommend this item for approval, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Um, having heard the item, I will now entertain a motion to approve action item C, staff item. So moved. Moved by Regent Lozar. Uh, any discussion from the board? I'm not sure I agree with cast of characters. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I do think when you say that, what it, um, what it described for me is a consistent, stable leadership team, which um, I think is an important concept uh, in terms of um, earning whatever merit increase might be applied. 
I appreciate that, uh, Regent Dombrowski. As as you know, um, as we reflect on the years gone by, uh, I've said in in many venues, this is an incredibly strong leadership team, in my opinion, and uh, a team that's functioning at a very high level together. And uh, there's a lot of pressures in the market right now, and keeping this team together is one of my very highest priorities. Um, so I appreciate any support we can get on this. Madam Chair. Any other comments from the regions? Um, the only other comment I'll share is, Commissioner, thank you so much for elevating that communications position to your cabinet. I think um, it's it's an important role. Uh, it's great to be adding some depth in that area, and it wouldn't have happened without your leadership. So thank you for bringing thank that you. forward. Yeah. Um, with no further discussion from the board, any discussion or corrections from the campus is Jasmine. I do not see. Any at this time? Okay, and any public comment on this item? I do not see any public comment. Okay, uh, seeing no further comment, I will call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Uh, the motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so now we've reached the point in the meeting where we will take public comment on any matter jurisdiction of the Board of Regents, but is that but that is not on our agenda. Uh, to allow us to give everyone a chance to comment, please limit your comment to three minutes. Written comment may also be sent to Jasmine Casanova, so jcasanovas at montana.edu. Is there any public comment? I do not see any public comment. Thank you. Thank you for running everything on the back end today, Jasmine. We really appreciate you. Um, what, no problem. Uh, it concludes our public agenda for the morning. Our next items will be taken up during executive session and then we'll finish the day with an informal planning session where no action will be taken. As we move into the executive session and as the presiding officer, I have determined that the discussion relates to a matter of individual privacy and that demands of individual privacy clearly exceed the merits of public disclosure. Our meeting is adjourned at the conclusion of the executive session. Thank you so much for everyone that joined us today. Thank you all.